The field is quiet now. But soon it will roar with life once more. For months, they've been preparing, pushing their limits, sharpening their skills, building strength to give everything for their schools and for the pride of their town. Will they be ready to write a new chapter? Crossroads Football Live Preview Show, presented by Victory Kia, where South Texas football comes alive. Sports Director Max Williams. Sports Reporter Zach Brown. Sports Reporter Ray Robinson. Sponsored by Palace Bingo. Victoria All Sports. Frost Bank. Crossroads Football Live Preview Show. Presented by Victory Kia. Welcome everyone here to the 2024 CFL Preview Show. I'm Max Williams. And I'm Zach Brown. We're excited to bring you the most comprehensive football coverage in the area. And tonight we give you an in-depth look at every football team in the crossroads, beginning with Class 2A, where we could see three powerhouses. Let's begin with the Ganado Indians who shocked the world last year and came just one quarter away from making it to a state championship. They look primed to make yet another run at things this year. This Indian team has returned pretty much everyone except for a couple of guys, and well, that's huge because they were a bought-in <laughs> group last season, and they get to pick up right where they left off last year, just one year wiser and a lot more confident. I mean, I'm, I'm excited. The whole team's excited, really. Um, we're going into the season pretty confident. Um, we know we got a big target on our back, but uh, we're just going to play to our best of our ability. I, I would say, like, not just me, but as a team, we handle pressure pretty well. Um, and adversity. We, we, when adversity strikes, we tend to find ourselves um, back in the game because we, we overcome that adversity. I know it's two totally different sports, but that Indian baseball team also nearly made it to state. Those were a lot of the same kids. They're about as battle tested as can be. They are primed to be a top dog in class two. Hey, Zach, what are we talking about? Some baseball here? We're we talking about baseball. Show, We're talking Come about on, playoffs. Man, it's football time, man. It's football preview show. Man, Canada, like we just talked about, they're one of those teams that can make a run for the state title. But one team that could stand in the way would be the Ferio Bobcats. They're no longer in the same district. Good realignment. Maybe they'll meet up in the postseason. The Ferio, they lost some insane ski at the wideout position last year. They lost four-star Ernest the Flash Campbell. They did track as well, Zach and a few other receivers on the team. So the quest remains the same for Furio, who enters the season. They're still ranked at number one by some and the number two by others. 25 News Now sports reporter Ray Robinson was at Refurio Bobcats scrimmage versus Goliad. He has a look at what the Bobcats are in the mix for a state title with their first year head coach, Drew Cox. Max and Zach, the Referio Bobcats are one of the premier teams in the CFL. Many preseason polls got them ranked as number one and number two. And if you attended today's scrimmages here at the Bobcat Stadium, you can most certainly see why they're favored. One of the reasons why the Referio Bobcats are one of the favorites to come out of their division is senior running back and middle linebacker 
Jordan King, who is very confident in his team going into the season. Season, you know, I'm just real confident in our team, what we can do, and I just believe we can win it all. Not, okay. not really. We're, uh, as a fear, we're, we're just used to having always having a target on our back, and we're just coming in and playing everybody how we'd play anybody else, the good teams and the bad teams. We would just play hard and physical and just play our ball. Senior quarterback Keelan Brown was most certainly excited about the wide receivers joining the roster. He was also very vocal about his role in leading the young guys and the team as a whole. Yeah, every leader knows, like, lead, leading a, a pack, especially as a quarterback, it's, it's not going to be easy. We're, we're always going gonna to have some ups and we're going to have some downs. But, you know what I'm saying, I just, I just stay true. I, you know what I'm saying, I trust in God. God always have a, has a plan. And, um... You know, and I'm, I'm just doing my best that I can to lead this team. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Losing to Ganado last year, you know, we definitely got us, we got an icky taste in our mouth, and this team is hungry. Like, we're hungry, man. I mean, going in the weight room, lifting weights, you know, I'm coming out here in the heat, the heat of the day at practice, like, we're, we're so hungry. Like Ray Robinson, KAVU TV 25 News Now, Sports. So we've touched on Ganado, we've touched on Refurio, but another Crossroads 2A powerhouse, that being the Shiner Comanches. They were in a rebuild stage last year, but really came into their own as the season went on. Shiner went two rounds deep in the postseason. I, I guess that's what a rebuild is. They had a first-year starter at quarterback in Carson Schutte. They have also been placed into a new district, joining other Crossroads squads in Louise and Yorktown. The Comanches led by the legendary Daniel Bedeker. They're returning their quarterback in Carson Schutte. They're also returning seven starters overall on that offense and eight on that defense. Shiner is also now 2A Division II. Look for Shiner to return the prominence and make a lot of noise this year. All right, Zach, so we talk about Shiner, but now let's go to the Bloomington Bobcats, who athletics program, they took a definitely a huge leap from last year in terms of really turning things around, and they'll now have to continue and grow with the new head coach, a familiar face in Lane Chance, who is the defensive coordinator, and last year, and the coaching staff led some pretty strict practices, and they're trying to focus more on discipline and fundamentals for a team. And Zach, we know that's very important in football, yes, focus sir. on the fundamentals. The Bobcats, they won their first district game in a de decade last year, which seems to be a sign of better things to come in the future. The boys have been grinding this year, and they're trying to turn that corner to play some November football. And we're, just, we're just working really, really hard and just getting out here and just competing, going against each other. We're hitting the weight room before we're coming out here. It, it's hot. The kids are, are, are they're grinding and getting through everything, and, and we're just trying to create competitions because we got a bunch of really young kids. So we're just getting out here. We're just trying to compete and get after each other. We just got to keep working. I mean, we've been working real hard already. We just got to push ourselves even harder and harder every single day. Bloomington, they want to hit the ground running from last year. They look to start off fast this year as well. Now we go to the Yorktown Wildcats, snuck to the postseason last year. They're going to be tougher this year, though, Zach. Again, this UIL realignment for all these teams is just tough, right? Because they're placing Shiner in the same district as Yorktown. Dave Campbell's Texas High School Football Magazine does still have Yorktown being a playoff team, finishing third. And the Wildcats, they're led by head coach Ryan Knotsman, only returning five starters on each side of the ball. All right, in that same district, the Louise Hornets projected to finish fourth in that district that also consists, consists of Shiner and Yorktown. Dave Campbell's projects the Hornets to make the postseason, finishing just ahead of Charlotte and Pettis. Coach Manny Freeland's team only returning four starters on each side of the ball. They've got some work to do, but one of those starters that is returning, quarterback Connor Gonzalez, who's a two-year starter, so he should be <laughs> ready to go. I hope so, Zach. And again, we'll try to be ready to go because after this break, we're going to highlight some Class 3A teams and again, look at uh, some other teams in the 2024 season. We'll be right back. All right, there it is. Welcome back, everyone. We talked about the loaded Class 2A that could see a three of our area schools here, Zach, make deep postseason runs. But now we turn our page to Class 3A. We had a team make it to the state championship game last year. That's going to be the Tidehaven Tigers, who fell just short in the title game last year as they made their first state championship game for the first time since 1980. The Tidehaven Tigers had one of the best defenses in the state of Texas last year, but graduated a few outstanding seniors. And of course, on the offensive side of the ball, their big four-star running back is now at Baylor University, Zach, as a Baylor Bear. So tight Haven Tigers, they have a lot of holes to fill and need questions answered if they want to make another deep postseason run. We're we'll replacing, we got some young fellas that are going to replace him. So week to week, we're just going to look to get uh, better and get them more experience. I think uh, our biggest thing is, is we want to peak come playoff time. 
uh, be nice to peak maybe a little before then uh, in district, but uh, goal is is uh, getting them playoffs and uh, have those boys with uh, enough playing experience to uh, get us to play on that level to where we can contend for maybe a four round, five round deep run. Tight Haven, they kick off the season against the Palacio Sharks coming up the first week. All right, well, we've also got a pair of Lavaca County schools hoping to do some big things this season. They're going to have to do so in maybe one of the toughest districts that this entire <laughs> state right. got to offer. Let's go all the way out to Hallettsville. Very talented team. In fact, the quarterback, Jorian Wilson, just committed to Texas A&M. Don't kill me. For baseball. <laughs> so he's obviously got a pretty good arm. The brain was led by second-year head coach Levi Montgomery. That coaching staff leads some intense practices in this intense Texas heat. They enter the season as a preseason number four ranked team in class 3A Division One. All right, Zach, but the other Lavaca County squad, the very interesting Yoakum Bulldogs, right? I mean, they feature four-star wide receiver Xavier Barnett. They're not quite set at the quarterback position, and they need someone to find at the best athlete because the running back is their best athlete right now, Zach. But the Bulldogs are also losing a ton of starters, one on the defensive side of the ball, and they're also bringing back a couple of three starters as well. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that Xavier Barnett is a different beast. He's a four-star yeah. right now. He's entering his junior season. He'll probably be a five-star by the time this season's over. But from Lavaca County, let's go to the Lavaca River Rivals where the Edna Cowboys are a big question mark coming into this season. The guys led by head coach Jimmy Mitchell. They just lost their four-year starter at quarterback in Jaden Clay, amongst others. And they may not have their top option at running back this year. This offense is going to rely heavily on top receiving option Braylon Harris with Chase Schubert being the projected week one starter. Now the good news for Edna, they are returning eight offensive starters and seven defensive starters. Even a lot of their depth is returning. This team does not lack experience, but it does remain to be seen if Edna can keep themselves afloat for a shot at a state title. I think Zach Edna is going to be a team to watch out for for the season, but the Industrial Cobras are also dealing with a bit of controversy at quarterback, just like Yoakum, right? After the graduation of star quarterback Ashton Garza, the Cobras are one of the scrappiest teams in the area, led by head coach Craig Naren. And the guys, they can't wait for their week one matchup. They'll get a rematch of their postseason game last year. It's also the Lavaca River rivalry. No rivalry, Zach. They're outstanding. When they face the Edna <laughs> Cowboys, they're going to kick things off on August 30th on our week one. So I'll tell you what, that Lavaca River showdown last year, 10 out of 10 games, then they met, they met up in the postseason, 10 out of 10 game, can't wait for this <laughs> week one matchup. But how about the team that actually won that district mm, last year? Yeah. Goliad was a pleasant surprise, knocking off the Edna Cowboys en route to a district championship. That is their first under head coach Kevin Salazar, who just took over a program that just four years ago, they were winless in district play. The guys were bought in, had a fantastic defense. They actually entered this season as a projected top 10 team in Class 3A. This according to Dave Campbell's Texas Football Magazine. But Goliad, not quite sure who their quarterback is going to be. Head coach Kevin Salad Salazar, excuse me, likes both of his guys that are competing for that job. The Tigers were regional semifinalists last year, undefeated in district. Can they do it again? I think it's just the confidence of, uh, you know, what we were able to accomplish last year but you know obviously we told our guys you know last year was last year this is a new year new group of guys uh, we do have a lot of returners back you know we've got really good depth uh, at a lot of positions and uh, you know we bring back a experienced offensive and defensive front so you know those are two good things to build around uh, build upon on the offensive and defensive side is establishing that that front now a tough East Bernard team is going to test Goliad right out of the gates Zach, I mean, like I said, Goliad's one of those teams, but another team that we're looking at, right, the Flash of Sharks, they got to get something going, right? They're making a lot more noise than they have in the past couple of years. They're projected right now sixth place in the tough district 15-3A. They're led by head coach Chad Graves, and hoping their quarterback Ty Treka give them a shot at their first playoff appearance since 2020, and they are returning most of the Shark team from last year, and Palacios is trying to keep up on the building for this season. And stay with us here. We're going to be right back here to cover some more teams here on our preview show.
where can we possibly see that we're a pretty good job of blocking out the outside world and all the naysayers? Valerie Green Casey Vaccaro, new quarterback Jackson Marie, now leading the Panthers and a big success last year as a sophomore. He's truly a great athlete. Guys at the spot will see him in spring training. Columbus Party, and a lot of people always talk about how soft their schedule is. Can't say that this year. These guys are going to be tough to come in in tomorrow again. Hey, it's a gobble gobble. I, I think the story <laughs> on the gobble is they're going to be a beautiful watch out for a win this weekend. But the thing that's probably going to be another one to watch, Meg, is how do you stand track? You guys went over 20 innings last year, and stand track, they were the dominant force to be reckoned with, right? Last year, they wanted to pick it off the end. I coached football for four years, right? When I coached football option, it was one of the toughest offenses to use to stop, right? And when we look at a team, everyone's on the same page. Defense, you've got to know where the ball is. You've got to know everything else. But with this football option now for Kansas City Royals and Cal, they got to understand a lot of different areas of playing their offense. And I think it's caused a lot of problems for this team. And it's really allowing them to get some patience now with this stand track because they're – Mitchell Whitaker, his whole – as a development of the younger guys over the years, it's helped them hit the ground running and not have any of those headaches that they were used to. I think one of the things that has a lot to do is our schedule is going to be as good as we defend the Orioles over the last other school schedules. And we're being coached with the same coaches. So we're hoping that along the way those kids are growing and getting better. And, and uh, I know we've been very fortunate to have uh, many years of success. It's always uh, those kids work their tails off. And then they, they really try to start filling those shoes. And it's going to help them get, ready, get that done the next year. And we just keep plugging along. And hopefully this year we all have the same result. And the Duke runs go down for Dan Calhoun. Big game for him. Three dogs on top of Miami. Oh, that would have been a great game last year. The final score, two to 19. <laughs> and one of those teams missed an extra point. The difference in that one point. But let's go out to El Campo. Now, Shane Gibbs with the Rice Bowl had an up and down season due to injuries last year. And their head coach, Travis Reed, the Florida Rice Bowl team has picked twice to live up to its name. They came short last season due to injuries. They did get a look at a lot of their younger guys. And they just weren't prepared would have been otherwise. Their cameras still have the Rice Bowl team second in that distance behind the Bay City Brat Pack. But I had us a dollar in share price. No share price fans. Don't worry. They're not going to like me here with that one. So it's just the early season projection. Early season. Okay. Not okay. Yet. So I get it. Every single team is going to be watching this. I think they got a lot of athletes. They had 11 guys out for the season. They hit the playoffs with Joey T last year. So they're going to be a very tough team. Well, and we talked about the Orioles, and now we're going to go over back over to Kia, which are the newer four wins on here. And you ask everyone here in the Orioles, who is most likely to make a state champion this year in Class 2A and 2? You see it look at Pineda, Victoria, Regina, and Pat. A lot of people are looking at the newer uh, Cal Corners of Pineda and Regina. I don't know if you agree with that, Paul. I do. I do not, man. But Pineda is about as good as it gets in the state of Texas. I've said this before. Dave Chandler's never said it. Pineda's going to win a state championship this year. They should have been in the state title game last year where they would have won state. And then there are a lot of those same guys play baseball who are six outs away from making it to a state title. There is no pressure. They're battle tested. They're bought in. They're well coached. I love Victoria and Pineda going to be the state champions this year. I'm stepping in right now. The traffic's just moving with the podiums right there, right? It's sweeping over here, Pineda and Victoria. But we wanted to hear from you. A couple soft plays of the day.com slash vote for sports. And we speak, we're not a sports parody, but we'll see if you agree with me and Zach and any of our team picks. Yes, Zach, you said any team outside of UNF is probably going to win. We're going to keep it here. We covered, like I said, the class 2, 3, and 4A. Zach, now we head to 5A where we're going to have some serious news looking at the preseason. We'll be back. Zach, we've made it already to 2, 3, and 4A. So what are we going to go to now? Class 5A. we got two Victoria schools, right, Zach? They've seen a lot of change this offseason. Started with the Tory East Titans. They went 8-4 and four last season. A lot of impact players on the team. And one of them was quarterback Casey Coley, who 
Last season, we know he's a two-sport athlete. Baseball, we talked a lot about baseball yeah, players, Yeah, right? me talking about baseball, not I know, you talking now about I'm talking it. about baseball. How All does right, that work man. out for a second? But <laughs> getting back to us, right, also for Victoria East, they got a new head coach as well, John Ford, who knows who knew new division will be different for the team. The Titans, they're fresh off a season in which they just won their first playoff game for the first time since 2016. You know, there's nine playoff teams on our schedule this year, and uh, you know that, that north side of San Antonio, you know it, it's it's a different ball game. But uh, you know these guys are again, you know we're, we're preaching physicality and execution, and these guys are really ready to rise to that challenge. The Titans are hoping to make a run this season, Zach, and I think they're going to be a great team here in Victoria. But don't challenge the other one. Though, they like should West. be a pretty good team because they're returning their quarterback. Yeah. But every time you have a new head coach, it always gets a little bit iffy. But another team mm. that's got a lot of change going on, they're keeping their head coach, but they've got a new quarterback. That's going to be the Victoria West Warriors. They were one play away, heartbreaking play away, from knocking off the Miller Buccaneers and going four rounds deep in last year's postseason. The Warriors, like I just said, led by head coach, Courtney Boyce, they always seem to have an incredible offense, but they've got some changes at their skill position, namely their starting quarterback after the graduation of Camden Repper. And this week here on 25 News Now, we're going to look at again our tweak to TV here, Zach, that we got again, the Quero Gobblers football season. Again, we look at it here, Jared Peacock, and so you can read more of this story on CrossroadsToday.com, and you can look for more on Twitter and Crossroads Today. We talked about Victoria West with a new quarterback, mm -hmm. and the Quero Gobblers also one of those teams with a, with a new quarterback. We already talked about Quero, but just to touch on what Beacott said about his new quarterback in Jackson Marie. Jackson was a sophomore last year. He was a defensive back. Beacott talked about how he can make every throw. He's a great leader. He's also very dynamic, and I guess he's yeah. just going to pretty much lead the charge because... Yeah. I mean, it's just going to be different, right, without obviously Mason Nataro from last season. Of, I mean, of course. but It's just, it's just going to be different for them. It's a lot of rebuild, right, for the Goblins. A lot of rebuild, but it seems like they've got the perfect guy to just come in and go straight to the next season and hit the ground running. But they've got that yeah. tough week okay. one guess challenge we'll against Columbus. Yeah, well, I guess we'll see, right, Zach? And, man, again, we got a lot of debates and everything. But, man, I'll do it for our UIL teams here for class 2, 3, 4, and 5A. Zach, when we come back, we'll talk about the St. Joseph Flyers and some of the other private schools in our area. We'll be back. All right, we have made it through classes 2, 3, 4, and 5A. Now we enter the private and homeschool section. The St. Joseph Flyers have a new head coach and head coach Jacob Vasquez, who's excited to be back home. He's a St. Joseph alum, and winning would just mean that much more to him. He takes over a Flyer program that just missed out on the postseason last year with, oh man, just two crushing losses to close out the year. But now they put that behind them. They turn the page to the 2024-25 year. They just really want to get back to the basics. I know this team has a lot of uh, great kids on it, um, you know, on the field and off the field. I'm excited to work with them. Um, again, we're, we're, we're going to get back to fundamentals, um, you know, try, focus on doing things the right way, tackling technique, just, you know, uh, offensive line technique, all that stuff. Um, that's what that's going to be our focus for this year um, as we move forward. And uh, I don't mean to be Captain Obvious or anything, but like the other 20 plus teams in this area, they want to start off hot, right? They play their <laughs> you would first, think, right? <laughs> <laughs> they play their first game at 6 p.m. next Friday. They don't have a field of their own. They're actually going to be in Edna. Edna. Yeah, they're going to be Man, in Edna. That's going to be. That's a trip there that's for a, them. That's a great like 30, field too. 40 minutes away. Yeah, about 30, know, 40. Hey, they got to do what you got to do though overall. But <laughs> we look again here. Now we travel over to back to the Shiner St. Paul Cardinals and man. They looking right now, Zach, they want to get back to the postseason. They were ousted in the first round against Temple Christian last year. They open up against Kip Sunnyside. So what do you think about this St. Paul uh, Cardinals yeah, team like, here, I, Zach? I'm actually from Sunnyside, oh, and uh, just because the name is <laughs> has Sunny, it ain't nothing sunny about it. I'm glad to be here in Victoria, Texas. Moving on to their Lavaca County rivals, Hallettsville Sacred Heart Indians, who they beat last year. Sacred Heart was fantastic. Going 11-1 last year, their only loss was actually in the postseason when they lost to Lubbock Christian. And Zach, I mean, hey, like I said, it's Cobras, not a bad team. Those are two yeah, fantastic two teams, teams, right? I mean, the Cobras and Gators, even though they low-level teams, you can never sleep on them. And I mean, speaking of the Gators, right, I'm looking at it here, Zach, the Cobras and the Gators, they're going to start off this season, right? I mean, six-man championship game from last year, win it the particular game. But now you look at this team overall, 
And I think for me, it's going to be interesting to see the strangers overall to this team. And that's going to be interesting to watch for the Gators and Cobras, Zach. I mean, what do you think about the Gators and Cobras going into this season? Uh, so, I mean, the Cobras were in the state title game last year. They mm -hmm. did not win in that particular game, but they are no stranger to success at all. They mm -hmm. win time and time and time again. They're very well coached. Now, the Victoria Gators are the team. They were a first-year team last year. They started to see a little bit more success as the season went on. Hoping for a lot more success, Max, here in year number two. Hey, we'll see how they do, Zach. Again, both of those teams trying to outstanding to watch out for in the rundown. All right, everyone. Thank you, man, for joining our CFL show. Again, if you need any sports scores or updates, come to CrosswordsToday.com or download our app and look for our podcast, Zach. That's going to be fun to do our podcast. And I will say this for me. I mean, you look at this, right? This is my first year doing CFL, Zach. I can't wait to see what the teams are going to be like, yeah. how everything is. It's You're not in Ohio right anymore. I You're going to see what South Texas football hey, is all about. That's one of the best football in the entire state of Texas. Real football. <laughs> real, real football. football. I like that. Real <laughs> football, <laughs> athletes, and everywhere. But Man, that's going to do it here for a show. Thank you very much. This is Max. This is Zach. See you next week.